Hi. I'm Arthur. Uh, yeah, new intro. Sorry you had to find out this way. If you've been following this channel for a substantial amount of time, you probably would have heard me say at some point that my favorite thing in the entire setting of 40k, 30k, and most things is the dreadnoughts. I love the idea of dreadnought sarcophaguses having a little dude that's just a brainstem and maybe like half of an arm piloting a fucking battle mech the size of a small tank. Er, or a large tank. Yeah, dreadnoughts are cool, but I find dreadnought characters are just significantly more captivating than other characters in any other piece of fiction. It's a character that's already won their battle laurels and is past their normal character arc. They're a veteran by right, usually making them jaded but brimming with personality that causes some weirdly wholesome and heroic moments to happen in their interaction with other characters. There are a lot of cool dreadnought characters, and I feel some of them don't get the spotlight they deserve, so I'm going to be highlighting five dreadnoughts in lore that I think are really fucking cool. And before you ask, yeah, I am going to be talking about Rylanor. Yes, everyone knows who Rylanor is. Shut up about it. Oh, and uh, by the way. Yeah, I'm not gonna stick with this one for too long, dog. There is very few people out there who don't know who Rylanor the Ancient of Rites is. There are so many people that know about him, probably more than anyone who knows about the 40k setting. So many people know about him that it's to the point where he is like just the below surface level character for the setting. If you look at 40k as a whole, most people can look at Captain Titus because people played the games. People can look at Gabriel Angelos and understand that he's a space marine and shit. But if you go slightly deeper than that, the first character usually people know about is Rylanor the Ancient. He is a Contemptor Dreadnought that was on Istvan 3 during the drop site massacre bombing. He was protected from the bombs by his Dreadnought chassis and ended up getting stuck under a crater for thousands of years. He was part of the Emperor's children, but unlike the debauched fucking degenerates that occupy it now snorting super coke off the ass of fucking demons, he upheld the honor of the Emperor. He was the Ancient of Rites, literally the keeper of all things involving the Emperor's children. He held the record of everything they stood for, everything they wanted, their ideals, traditions, and beliefs, and he was betrayed by them at large. So how the story goes is essentially for like thousands of years, Rylanor, half insane, pulled himself as much together as possible on Istvan 3 and gathered some of the undetonated virus bombs that were left on the planet afterwards. Put them all in a single spot and linked them up with a detonator linked with his dreadnought chassis. He then made a lure to bring in his Primarch Fulgrim, who was at this point a fuck snake demon of asshole proportions. Being lured by any bait is usually how Fulgrim works, not exactly known for good impulse control, but he shows up and looks at the last of his uncorrupted sons, who's accompanied by some thousand sun sorcerers, whom upon setting off the virus bomb trap, created a shield made out of psychic energy to protect Fulgrim themselves and Rylanor. Because Fulgrim wanted to make an example by corrupting the hardest to corrupt motherfucker in the universe. Because we can't have nice things while Fulgrim is still around. I'm just going to throw the mic over to a friend of mine real quick and let him do a bit of a dramatic reading as to what Rylanor said to Fulgrim in this moment. I am Rylanor, of the Emperor's Children, Ancient of Rites, Venerable of the Palantine Host, and proud servant of the Emperor of Mankind, beloved by all. I reject you now and always. He said that to his dad who was trying to corrupt him at the moment. So, saying that, every single Thousand Sun Sorcerer that was on the planet basically thought the same thing akin to, man, he's pretty cool. And also, Fulgrim sucks. So, one of the sorcerers pulls a gun, blows the brain out of the lead sorcerer, virus bombs end up killing everyone. Fulgrim is immortal because he's a demon, so he ended up respawning back in the warp, but legend states that to this day, he has to carry the overwhelming weight of that fucking L with him wherever he goes. Rylanor is based, and cool, and based. Now, please look at these other boxy boys. Uh, 
Ah, yes. The trendy dreadnought to talk about. I think. It might just be my own hindsight bias, but it felt like in the last six months of writing this, everyone and their mom started talking about Huron Fall and Ulus Timeter. With good reason, don't get me wrong, where Rylanor before gave you the feeling of honor and defiance, Huron Fall is just... sad. Genuinely, when I got to this one scene, I will discuss in a moment, I was cooking while listening to the audiobook at this specific scene in Flight of the Eisenstein. I dead ass just started crying into my carbonara. I was a bubble blowing bitch of epic proportion. So, Huron Fal was a very minor character in Flight of the Eisenstein. He is a contemptor dreadnought that was a part of the Death Guard Legion. He was given maybe half of a chapter in the beginning of the book and maybe like a third of a chapter at the end. I think about this scene a lot. So what is this scene? He was a part of the Loyalist Death Guard that were on the Istvan 3 dropsite massacre. He was guiding people into airtight sealed bunkers so that they could survive the virus bombs. His friend, one of his best friends I mind you, Captain Ulus Temeter, asked him to try and fit in the bunker as well, but the Dreadnought reaffirmed to him that his Dreadnought chassis can seal the virus out and he won't be affected by it. Ulus Temeter kind of noticed something was off with what he said, so he ended up staying outside as long as he could to help his friend shepherd others into the bunker. The bombs drop and Captain Temeter is left out, and as the virus is wreaking havoc on his body, you get this scene that plays out. He managed two stumbling steps before he fell, the muscles in his legs singing with agony. Huron Fowl caught him. I told you to run, you fool! The captain flung off his helmet with a final agonized gesture of defiance. It was useless now, the virus having moved effortlessly through the breather grill and into his lungs. His hand flailed at the metal flank of the dreadnought and traced a runnel of dark fluid. Even through the pain, Temeter understood. There was a small fracture in the old warrior's ceramite casing, not enough to have slowed him on the battlefield, but more than the virus needed to reach inside the dreadnought's hull and savage the remnants of flesh inside. You lied! Veteran's prerogative, came the reply. We'll go together then, shall we? Huron Fowl asked, embracing Temeter's body to him, moving swiftly away from the bunker. It took every last effort from Temeter to nod. Blinded now, he could feel the tissues of his eyes burning and shriveling in his head, the soft meat of his lips and tongue dissolving. Huron Fowl's systems were on the verge of shutdown as he stumbled to a safe distance, skidding to a halt. This death! rasped the Voda. This death is ours. We choose it. We deny you your victory. With a single burning nerve impulse, the mind of the warrior at the heart of the dreadnought uncoupled the governor controls on his compact fusion generator and let it overload. For a moment, there was a tiny star on the battered plains outside the Coral City, marking two more lives lost within a maelstrom of murder. Uh, yeah, it's a really good book. You, you, sh you should read it. <gasps> Who's next? Okay, this dreadnought is actually pretty well known as well, but Bjorn is not as talked about, and I think that's kind of a shame. I really like Bjorn, which is insane because I'm not the biggest fan of Space Wolves. Bjorn is a Castroferum pattern dreadnought with a magic hand, which is a bit of a reductionist way of looking at it, but he has quite a bit going on. Firstly, he is canonically the oldest active space marine. Like, he was alive and conscious during the Horus Heresy and had no warp fuckery to send him to the future. So, he's thousands of years old and kept alive by the Dreadnought technology in the sarcophagus. He actually met Lehman Russ and has a bit of a vendetta against him. See, when Lehman was going off with the best of his warriors to go into the warp to fight forever, Bjorn rose to his feet to try and join his gene father and Lehman simply looked at him and said, not you. 
which Bjorn just kind of dwelled on a little bit. His namesake, the Fell Hand, is a super mega kill you super ice claw lightning claw made of crack and bone diamond anti everything magic rocks. It's just really strong and it looks really, really cool. And a fun little fact about it is it actually used to be just a regular lightning claw that Bjorn ended up adding on to over the years that they broke apart and retrofitted to a dreadnought chassis as its main combat weapon when he was entombed. And if I remember correctly, the wound that did it was a Nurgle demon of great repute. He's apparently so ancient that he just developed weird psychic powers there, where in between combat, when he is frozen in stasis, his spirit wanders the halls of the Fang, just chilling. They often defrost him during moments where he is needed most, but also just to tell stories of the heresy to the new recruits so they know where they came from and get it straight from the horse's mouth in that situation. He just seems like a cool, complex, and fun character, and at the end of the day, he's just super memorable. Yes, I take every excuse I can to talk about the Night Lords, but this one is special. Malkarion is a bit of a special case, as he was a legendary Night Lord, one of the few philosophical members of a legion known for people who don't like thinking about anything other than torturing babies for a laugh. Malkarion was one of the higher ranked officers of the Night Lords in the Heresy, and allegedly killed three captains from three different legions in like the same day a White Scar Captain, an Imperial Fist Captain, and a Blood Angel Captain, which is kind of badass. Being interred into a Dreadnought was not exactly high on his tier list, so he just refused to wake up whenever someone tried to get him ready for war, which kind of sucks because having a mobile battle tank piloted by one of the greatest warriors in your entire culture is kind of an asset, but it took thousands of years after the heresy to finally do so. Awakening during an act of Night Lord style treachery to cut a Terminator the fuck in half with an autocannon, which is always cool, and immediately went back to war for the betterment of his legion, serving under individuals like Talos and the members of First Claw. Because they kind of needed that leadership figure because um, the Exalted was um, kind of going insane. Now, on a side note, I said earlier that he allegedly killed three captains. That's because the third one, the Blood Angel, Raguel the Sufferer, ended up also being put into a Dreadnought sarcophagus due to the wounds sustained by Malkarion. So there is this fun little moment where the Dreadnought is ripping through Night Lords with a multi-melt after boarding their ship, and Malkarion shows up and you could imagine some kind of like electric guitar riff as he says something to the effect of, Remember me, bitch? Cut to the coolest shit you've ever seen, a mech fight and both dreadnoughts end up dying. Not really though. Against the orders of the current ranking officer, Talos, and Malkarion's own wishes to just be let alone to die, he gets brought back to life a second time. I can't help but imagine him saying something to the effect of, THE FUCKING COME ON! Upon opening his eyes, Albeit, Deltrian, the Mechanicum guy who did it, was blasting him with electricity to wake him up faster, so he was a bit pissed off about it. But regardless, he is a badass in all respects, given to Dreadnoughts, that is. So, check him out. And also, read the Night Lords trilogy, it's really good. I left out a lot of stuff about Malkarion in that series, and you learn a lot more about him as a character. Eh, gotcha on this one, eh? The other four are talked about by other content creators in the sphere, but no one ever brings up the hungry man himself, Naum the Dreamer. He's a bit of an oddity, and there isn't going to be much art of him that exists, so enjoy stock images of Death Guard Dreadnoughts and Chaos Hellbrutes. But essentially, Naum is a Dreadnought that was included in the Lord of Silence by Chris Raitt. 
he's an oddity. He points out an interesting aspect of becoming a dreadnought that is there can be complications in the surgery to get you acclimatized to the mech itself. The complication here is that in between campaigns of war, a dreadnought must be put into sleep. To preserve their sanity, this sleep is actually more artificial than like traditional sleep because as the actual process of REM sleep is kind of impossible when you are a floating brain in a sarcophagus. The problem here is when Nam was put into the dreadnought, the surgery fucked up the part of his brain that is responsible for that kind of artificial sleep and he couldn't be induced into that artificial sleep. So being unable to sleep in general, he ended up being awake for thousands of years in a Nurgle infested ship. So suffice to say he has gone shithouse rat insane. He's also a big boy. When they go to find him in the book to get him prepped for a military campaign on a space marine chapter known as the White Consuls, they realized that somehow he's gotten bigger. The meaty bits got meatier and the metal bits have gotten bigger as well. They don't question it because it's a Nurgle infested demon ship, but like it's still very disturbing when they walk in because he asks to eat the Death Guard Plague Marine whom is talking to him. It took a bit of haggling because the guy's not all there and they find out he's just hungry. Boys gotta eat! His bare head exposed to the world, of course, with his teeth gnashing, he wants to eat something, so they promise him a dinner to end all dinners if he helps. He agrees, and then they fuck up the White Consul's homeworld, and he gets to eat like five space marines? Boy has a good day, what can I say? It's dark, it's silly. The Lord of Silence is a good one-off book, so I'd recommend reading it when you guys can. And that was five interesting Dreadnought characters. Will I cover them more in the future? I don't fucking know. I think I cover them well here, who knows? But what do you guys think about the Dreadnoughts and Dreadnought characters? I find they are consistently more interesting than traditional Space Marines when they are included. But that may be me because I have a soft spot for Dreadnoughts. Do you have any other character Dreadnoughts that you hold a soft spot in your heart? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And also make sure to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out substantially. Alongside that, I want to thank my channel members, and if you want to see my content early, or even see exclusive videos, then become a channel member. It helps me survive while providing this content for all of you. And until next time, maybe I should bring up that the Space Wolves have a murder-obsessed feral werewolf that they put into a dreadnought named Murderfang? Maybe. Nah.